you take a 12% stake in the open market. Uh, you are focused on trying to get MGM to focus more on the opportunity in online gaming. You know, if I put another name on this letter, Elliot or any other, it would read like an activist letter. Is that how you're viewing yourself in this? No, not even remotely. And, I, and, and even the, the first sentence, we're not trying to get them to focus more on anything. I think they're doing a wonderful job focusing on online gaming. They're trying to focus more on online gaming, which is why we're excited about it. We think the, the, the Bill Hornbuckle is a great leader. He's got the, the right vision for the company. We think uh, the board is doing a great job uh, uh, pushing into this huge opportunity in, in digital. And that's why we're excited to get involved. Did you talk to the board and to management before you started to accumulate stock? We, we told them all along what we were doing. You told them all along what you're doing. So what is it you're doing? Uh, that we really like the company. We really like the opportunity. We like the, the size of the market. When, when we talk about um, IAC's history and the things that have worked out well for us, this offline to online transition has been a huge theme. And we look for very large markets and we look for players who have, a, we think, a fundamental advantage in very large markets that are undergoing this kind of transformation. MGM is in, uh, I think, seven states right now, going to 11 by the end of the year. They are uh, uh, with licenses or whatever the, the proper term is to get to, to 19 states, which is, I think, ahead of everybody else as it relates to, to getting that step forward. And uh, they're executing here. They're investing real money here. And we believe that, that the winning formula in this area of digital gaming is actually the full picture of offline to online. When you say you can offer the consumer the, the full experience of what it means to, to come into a venue and to be entertained in that venue and then stick with that customer digitally when they're at home, uh, when they're on the go, we look at that as a, a, as a really exciting uh, customer relationship and, a, and, again, a very large market. Right, and something you guys know a lot about. In your letter, you say you'll be a minority investor, but given the size of our financial commitment, we'd welcome the opportunity to, to contribute to MGM's success in a number, in any number of areas. What does that mean? Do you want to be on the board? Is this a long-term relationship? How do you see this evolving? We'd be happy to help wherever they want us to help. I think that's really what, what we're suggesting, that if, if they want us on the board, which they, they said they did, we'd certainly welcome that. Uh, we, we, anywhere we can help, we want to help. It, Joey, that's, what, that's what we think about as partnership. Joey, was that conversation part of uh, the discussion surrounding acquiring the stake? And if so, I'm curious, you know, how come you went to the open market and per purchased shares at, you know, a $19 uh, per share cost basis? Uh, you know, if those conversations were happening, um, I'm curious if there wasn't discussion surrounding, you know, maybe getting some sort of a better deal considering you're putting a billion dollars into this company. The amazing thing about MGM is they don't need capital right now. They did some very, very smart moves. Uh, I mean, technically very smart, timing-wise uh, lucky in, in the sense no one saw the pandemic coming. But but they had the right strategy going in, which was to be well-capitalized, be overcapitalized. They have, I think, at the current level, something like 4.8, somewhere $4 or $5 billion of cash and so they they have the capital to to get through this. Uh, obviously, Vegas right now is is certainly very very far from its peak potential, but they have the capital to to ride that storm up. All right. So you view this, you say, as a long term, uh, a long with a long term view. But you also say, even if we never advance our involvement from here, the value was too compelling to ignore. What do you mean by that? Think about the same thing we, we see at IAC where. Up until recently, we had two public subsidiaries. And if you added up the value of the publicly traded securities in our two public subsidiaries and the cash that we had in our balance sheet, many times that exceeded our total market value. And MGM is actually quite similar in that they have two public subsidiaries, uh, which they own liquid securities in. And uh, they have a, a cash balance. They actually have debt. Also, uh, uh, we, don't, we don't normally have as much debt as they do, but they, they have... Uh, cash as well. And if you add all that up, you get to now a, I guess stock's gone up today, but basically at the time that we were buying, you get the domestic business, which is a huge cash flow business effectively for free. And that we see as a really good opportunity.